where the bloody hell have I been? Oh, I'll tell you where I've been. I went on holiday for four days for the first time since 2018. Went for a little trip to Bristol. What did I get? COVID for the first time. It was great. Came straight home, wiped me out for a good 10 days. Felt terrible. I haven't been that ill since I was about 12. I have taken breaks before, but this time I know you were worried about me, so um, thanks for all the flowers and the cards and chocolates that you didn't get me. Um, it was really nice, nice touch. Anyway, we're back where we started. Learning guitar. Why am I so angry? I don't know. I'm gonna read you a little passage about the guitar solo from Heartbreaker that we're gonna to learn today. The track continues with the second guitar solo from 2 minutes 59. This time, the Bonham Jones duo is on the act. They support the guitarist with an infectious energy. Bonham working his crash cymbal with enormous power and Jones doubling the Les Paul riff on his jazz bass. The improvisation by Page is a demonstration of his velocity and formidable technique. While it could be said that a few of his phrases leave something to be desired, that they are a little approximate in places, his playing is so full of feeling and inspiration that these defects count for little. Strange that they've called it approximate and said that these defects, because when I learnt it, it feels very Jimmy to me, you know? There's a little bit in there like the running black dog. I like the solo, I think it's brilliant, that's why I wanted to teach it today, I wanted to come back strong, something we've not done before. Um, I don't think there's defects. I think it's a very cool rock and roll solo. So let's get to it. Things to know, we are in the key of A, we are in standard tuning. If you want the tabs to go along with this lesson, you can grab them on my Patreon. And we are gonna be breaking things down into small manageable sections and working through it bit by bit. So here's the first part. <laughs> We're gonna start by hitting the open A string and then pick the third fret and hammer onto the fourth fret, second and third finger. Then you're gonna hammer on second fret of the D to fourth fret, and then hit the second fret of the G, which is our octave of the A, where we started. Then you're gonna do the exact same thing again, but the octave above. So that's hammering on from the fifth fret of the G to the sixth fret, this time index and second fingers. Then hammer on from five to seven on the B and then grab that A on the fifth fret of the high E. And then just to finish, you're gonna slide into the 10th fret of the B string. It's also the note A. You could hit that twice, but you don't get that slide into the note, which is conclusive. It's really cool. Next part of the solo goes like this. Start with this little chromatic run from the 8th fret of the high E up to the 9 then the 10. When you get to that 10, you're going to pull off a semitone back to the 9, 
hit the 10 again, and then pull off a tone back to the eight. So you're going from D to C sharp, then D to C. And you're gonna hit that 10th fret again, and you're gonna bend it up a whole tone to the E, three times in a row. You let it down and then play this. So that's again chromatically walking up from the eight to the 10 on the high E string, and then just eight, nine on the high E, and then this time 10 on the B. Now, as you land on the B, 10th fret, you're gonna bend it up a tone and a half, a minor third stretch from the A to the C. You're gonna hit it four times. Then you let it down, hit the 10th fret, and then come back to the eighth fret with the index finger. Then we have this cool little phrase. Here we're gonna slide into the 11th fret of the G with the second finger and then 10th fret of the B with the index. Hit the 12th fret of the high E, third finger. And then you're gonna bend it up a whole step and then let it down, bend it back up, let it down and bend it back up again. Um, when I'm doing these things slow and teaching, I tend to leave out any vibrato because it can get a little bit messy when you're trying to do it slow. Um, so you can just learn the notes first and then add all the kind of sprinkles afterwards. That's how it's going to go. Now on that last one, Pre-bend, release down, and pull off back to the 10 with the index finger. Then come to the 13th fret of the B, third finger, back to the 10 on the high E, and then back to the 13. And that's gonna transfer into the fast, repetitive kind of little hammer on pull off licks. So whilst these two parts are some of the fastest um, little licks that happen in the solo, they're repetitive, right? So once you get them down, just repeat them over and over again. First one, you're gonna start with a hammer on pull off from the 10th fret of the B to the 13th fret. You can use third finger or pinky. Then come down to the 12th fret of the G with the second finger. And then back to the 10th fret of the B with the index finger and then 13 with either third or pinky, whatever you've decided to use. You're gonna do that four times in a row. Now that last time you'll notice that the 13th fret um, at the end becomes the first note of our next lick, okay? So that's where I actually do shift to pinky because I prefer it. So this time we're gonna hit the 13th fret with the pinky, pull off to the 10. 12th fret with the third finger, pull off to the 10. 11th fret of the G with the second finger, and then pick the 10. On the fourth repeat of that lick, I just changed the ending ever so slightly. I just hit two 10s on the B string instead of going to the 11 on the G. Together it goes like this. Coming out of that section, we have this really cool lick. You can start on the 13th fret of the B and you're gonna bend it up twice, two tones. It's that kind of good times, bad times, whole lot of love, page-esque bend. Come back to the 10th fret of the B with the index finger, 12 on the G, back to 13 on the B, 
third finger, and then back to the 10 on the B index. That little triangle. It's cool when players have their kind of signature licks, their go-to licks, um, because once you've learned them from one song, they make sense in others, and you go, ah, oh, he's doing that, I recognize that. Makes your job easier. And then just to wrap it up, you hit the 12th fret of the G again, 10th fret of the B, 13th fret. And you're gonna bend that up, down, and then up twice. And then that same kind of ending that we did a second ago. Just before it changes to those chords, power chords in open position, we have this lick. So it's a very quick seventh fret bend on the G, whole step, and then bar the index across the five on the B and the E. First part's dead simple, it's an open A5 power chord. G note on the low E string, slight pull if you want and then back to that A5 power chord again. And then the next run is the exact same thing that we learned right at the very start. You just don't have to hit the extra open A because you've hit the A5 power chord instead. And when you get to that 10th fret of the B string, note A, our root note, you're gonna bend it all the way to hell and back. So it's gonna swoop up three times, a minor third, so that's a tone and a half, equivalent of going to the 13th fret. And on the fourth time, you're gonna bend it up two tones. Hit it, and you're gonna pre-bend release it all the way back down to the A. I just wanted you to hear the pitch there with the fretted notes so that you can get it into your head, okay? In terms of execution here, I do this kind of staccato pick muting where I'll pick the note, bend it, and then touch the string again with the pick to mute the note just before picking it again to play it. So you get this kind of thing. It's quite difficult that section, but I think the best thing to do is understand the notes you're bending to in terms of pitch and the interval, which we discussed, and then copy me or the track um, for the rhythm. And just remember to put in some of that kind of staccato pick mute in and, uh, and you'll get it. Next part. Home straight, it's the easy part now. Little minor third, alternate picked. You're gonna slide into the ninth fret of the G with the second finger, index finger on the eighth fret of the B. Then slide up to the 14th fret of the high E, then 12 with the index finger, and then 13 on the B in the middle with the second finger. Little triangle here. Um, and you're just gonna go around and around. I finish on that 13th fret of the B with the second finger. And for the pick in here, I'm going down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Reason being it's a three note phrase, odd numbers, and it's across two strings, even numbers. So if I was alternate picking it, it would change what I have to pick each time. I sometimes find that confusing, so here, I find it easier to just pick down, up, down, down, up. And then right at the end, we're gonna slide into the 17th fret of the B with the third finger, 15th fret of the high E with the index, back to that alternate picking and finishing on a down stroke. And you can kind of slide down and out. I think it hits a snare and a floor tom at that moment. Um, it's very powerful.
And that is how I find my way through the guitar solo from Heartbreaker by Led Zeppelin. Incredible song um, and an amazing guitar solo. It's a lot more difficult than you might think. It's very, very fast and peculiar timing in places, but learning it will teach you a lot. You'll take a lot away from it. Um, one of the hardest bits for me is that very first uh, lick where it makes its way through two octaves. It's because that minor third to major third hammer on first happens with the second third finger. And then in the second octave, it's the same thing, but it happens index second. And it kind of messes with your mind a little bit. But take it slow and you will get it. Now, if you want the tab or the Guitar Pro to go with this lesson, as always, you can grab that on Patreon. And don't forget, if you liked this video, um, now that I'm back from the dead, you can hit like, uh, subscribe, the bell next to it. And don't forget to leave me a comment, let me know what you think of my version and any other recommendations, suggestions. You'll also notice there's a little love heart beneath the videos now with a dollar sign in the middle. That's called Super Thanks, apparently. It's a new feature. Um, being a patron or channel member is not for everyone, but if you're feeling generous, you want to leave a little tip with your comment, you can do that now. How cool is that? No pressure. I'm not trying to rip you off. But, you know, like I said, every little helps. Hopefully I'm not ill for the next 10 years. Touch wood. And uh, yeah, we can do more of these videos more often. I'm going to go now. I'll see you soon.